Hi, thanks for taking the time to join me today to talk about Neo4j Bloom Slicer. My name is Jeff Gagno, and I'm a product manager here at Neo4j. And Neo4j Bloom is our no-code, low-code visual graph exploration solution. The Slicer is an exciting new feature that allows you to explore numerical or date-time data in an interactive way, as well as play through the data to demonstrate what the data tells you about your specific story. So let's have a look. First, let's have a look through the Northwind dataset for some products that are connected to categories. We can see here the categories are blue nodes and the products are labeled on the yellow nodes. To activate the slicer, use the icon found under the current filter icon. We're now in slicer mode and we can add up to five ranges. The ranges will show any properties that are numerical or date time values and the associated categories or relationships that they're found on. In this example, we're looking for units in stock above 39, heading up to 125. You'll see the range values on the left and right side of the histogram at the top. Now let's have a look at a different range. By clicking the Add Range button, I can leave this current units in stock range active and add unit price as a secondary range. Note the histogram showing unit price ranges from 2.5 to 263.5, and the histogram has both dim and darker bars. We can see here by this dimmed out bar that there are two nodes that have prices between six and seven dollars, but neither of them are currently on the scene because they've been sliced out because of the units in stock range that we've already applied. So now if we look at prices between 34.80 and 263.50, and also bear in mind that we have units in stock above 39, we can see all of the data that meets that criteria from our current Bloom scene. We can easily move the slicer back and forth to walk through our data and get a better sense of what's there. And we can also interact with the nodes by double clicking on them per normal and having a look at all of their properties. Note that while we're in slicer mode, functions to add new data or remove data from the scene other than via the slicer are disabled. We can easily go back into our regular scene to add data or change the scene in other ways. One of the other interesting features that the slicer provides is this play button down on the bottom left. If you click the play button, you can iterate through the data that's in the slicer histogram, as you can see here. There are three different settings found in the settings icon above the play button that let you decide if the slicer window maintains its current width and slides from left to right across the histogram, whether we start sliding from the left side of the sliced area to the right side of the sliced area, or whether we continue from the left side of the sliced area all the way to the end of the histogram. Note that there are a couple of different ways to close the slicer. One is using the X or clicking the slicer icon again, and this returns you back to the scene that you originally started with. All of your settings will be saved in the slicer, and all you need to do is click on each of the ranges you've added and reactivate them using the toggle. Another option is to click the Keep Scene and Close button. If you do this, you'll be returned into the main Bloom interface with the scene having all of the sliced out elements still removed. Enterprise users can save multiple scenes and each scene will retain the settings associated with the slicer for that particular scene. Thanks for taking the time to check out Neo4j Bloom's new slicer feature. If you haven't already, feel free to get started today. Head over to neo4j.com and set up an Aura DB free instance, which will include Neo4j Bloom with the slicer feature. Also, for more information, check out the blog by my colleague, which is linked in the description below the video.